Hey everybody, it's your Sam and I'm here with another video. Today I want to talk about Mists. My Kindle Vela titled Makeover Institutions Supplementing the Supernaturals, which is a mouthful and I kind of regret titling it that, but I am pleased that I can shorten it to Mists for you because it's very fitting. The area that Mists is set in is known to have fog. A lot during the mornings so it fits. I am going to do a small mini series of videos talking about mists. This one is going to be a little bit more of the backstory and touching a little bit on some of the main characters and the main characters that are going to be in the epic that mist is kind of a side story for and also a little bit about where mist is set. The next few videos are going to cover side characters and the species that you can find in Mist as well. Without further ado, let's kind of jump into it. Mist is set in my hometown. Yeah, you heard that right. I took the liberty of setting it in my hometown, kind of outside of it, and I have made a few changes here and there, but it's pretty much Murphy, North Carolina, out in the middle of absolute nowhere. <laughs> but if you believe the Chamber of Commerce signs and some of the t-shirts that Murphidians wear, then you know that Murphy is basically two hours from anywhere that people actually know about. Murphy is two hours from Asheville, North Carolina, it's two hours from Atlanta, Georgia, and it's two hours from Knoxville, Tennessee, Chattanooga, Cleveland, Tennessee area, depending on which way you go and which town you actually want to go to. And so that's where I grew up. That's where I lived for 20 plus years, and that is where my family is from. The area that I grew up in my family has owned land there for over a hundred years. Murphy is a tourist town without there really being anything to attract people to it. It's odd. It's always been that way. It's rather strange. There are a few things. We do have a blue marble courthouse, which is the only one I know in the state. I think it's in the entire south and we have a very good museum it has a lot of artifacts and things on the Cherokee Nation the Cree Nation and the founders of Murphy and the local area there are a ton of old buildings that you can visit there is a pyramid that is kind of a monument slash grave for one of the founders of Murphy that is really neat. There is a wall that was built by mysterious people and I'll get a little bit more into that whenever I talk about species. Murphy boasts being two hours from anywhere because it is the tourist town where you can stay so that you can travel to these other towns to see the bigger stuff. Also, we're situated in a way where you can go rafting on two to three different rivers, depending on which way you go, the Nanahala and the Okoe. The Okoe, if those of you following rafting and kayaking, hosted the Olympics one year, and the Nanahala hosted part of the Olympics another year. So yeah, it's kind of famous in that way. <laughs> Murphy is the place where the Atlanta bomber was caught, Eric Rudolph. So that is another little claim to fame that Murphy holds. And it's not really a great claim to fame, but here we are. Murphy is a town that you love if you love it, you hate it if you hate it. There's hardly any in between. There's a lot of people who have settled there, they retire there, we call them halfbacks lovingly in some cases and not so lovingly in others. 
those are the people that moved from up north. They moved down to Florida, didn't quite like Florida too well, and then they moved halfway back up and settled in Murphy. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of those. There's a lot of people who have been there for generations upon generations, and then there are people who just kind of stumble upon Murphy just because. So yeah, that's a little bit about Murphy. It's really pretty. I highly recommend visiting it at least once in your life. On to the more interesting things. These characters, the main vampires in my story, are descendants of Cain. And this is, yes, biblical Cain. Cain was cursed by a celestial being to become a vampire after he killed his brother Abel. He wasn't put to death himself, like some people believe. He was literally cursed to become a vampire. And this is torture in and of itself because Cain was avid in the outdoors, for those of you that know the stories, and when he became a vampire, he was cursed to live in the moonlight, pretty much. And he did so for hundreds upon hundreds of years. Now, with this curse, he did grow out of needing to only be out at night. He can be out in the sun now. He acts a little bit more human. His organs act a little bit more human just because he is so old. And yes, he is still surviving. His firstborn son that is still surviving, and yes, I have to say that that way, is Andeeb. And you did meet Andeeb in the first and second chapters of Mists. Andeeb is now the head of the house. He has to take care of pretty much everything. But as you know in Mists and may have picked up on it if you read the first two chapters, he is not in complete control. He's kind of slipped a little bit. And this is because he damaged himself. <laughs> greatly in recent years and is still healing from that. Han, on the other hand, is the seventh living son of Cain. He is only half brother to Andeeb though. He is half werewolf, half vampire, and he has pretty much taken up the role of being Andeeb and Cain's caretaker. He pretty much runs the household when Andeeb just kind of throws up his hands and doesn't want to deal with it anymore. He's also the one that wrangles in Kane and tries to keep the mad scientist a little less mad <laughs> and more tame. And sometimes he succeeds in that, sometimes he kind of gets thrown into the madness himself. In Mist, though, we follow Ansgar and Christian the most. Ansgar is the third surviving child of Cain. He is the third oldest out of the ones that have survived thus far. And the reason why I say it like that is because there have been many children, many offspring, either seeded by Cain or made by Cain using his science and his magic. <laughs> so Osgar is the third surviving of these and he is a vampire of dreams. He's kind of like the Sandman for those of you who watch Neil Gaiman Sandman or have read it. He doesn't think he's as powerful as Sandman because yes he has read Sandman. But technically, he kind of could be if he put his mind to it. Osgar is one of those that he doesn't believe that he can really be all-powerful. He's used to living in the shadow of Andeep and in the shadow of his father, Cain. Also, he has had some setbacks in his life. And I won't really go into that because that's kind of a spoiler for his book. Next is Christian. Christian is the tenth living child of Cain. He is not awakened. So the vampires in my series 
go through an awakening phase. This is when they come to their full extent of power, their peak. This is where they can do anything up to their limit. Them being the sons and children of Cain, they don't really have that much of a limit. They are rather powerful beings if they allow them to be, if nothing mentally or emotionally is holding them back. Christian is well over the age of the awakening period and he has yet to awaken and most of his siblings blame his being in the Vatican buried in books and ledgers and scrolls his entire life. He hasn't really witnessed the world as it is now. He's witnessed the past. And for those of you that have known someone kind of stuck in the past, you don't really go through life living as you should if you are stuck in the past. So that's the reason why most of Christian's siblings think that he hasn't awakened yet because he's basically living in the past. His knowledge is vast and he has read just about everything. Yes, he's spent most of his time in the Vatican, but he has traveled far and wide to bury himself in libraries around the world and bookstores around the world. He has sat with some of the most profound prophets, if you would call them that, of the world as well in his time frame. That's a little bit more about Ansgar and Christian. Now with Raven, Bo, and Lore, they are the wolves that you follow in mist. They are called Elder Wolves. I'll get a little bit more into this in my species talk, but the Elder animals, creatures, if you would, of my world are created by celestial beings in order to take care of the world. They have certain abilities and certain tasks they must fulfill in order to take care of the world and make sure that the world lives and breathes as it should. The only hindrance to that is they can do nothing against or with humans. Every now and then they can influence them, talk to them, befriend them, stuff like that. But that is it. And that is the reason why the world is probably in the state that it's in. At least in my, my little world here. Needless to say, there are seven elder species, wolves being one of them. Most of these species are known as keystone species or apex predator species because in my mind, they have the most influence on an environment, especially keystone species. So that's the reason why I wanted to make the elder species mostly keystone species because they are important. And wolves are one of them. Elder wolves differ from werewolves and other shape-shifting wolves in the fact that they do have this power and they were created directly by the celestial being called Nadia. Nadia is also the one that cursed Cain into being a vampire. I will go a little bit more into Nadia probably in this species because she has her hand in just about all of the species in mists in some form or fashion. If it's not her, then it's Lucifer. They are the creator's lackeys. They do everything that the creator does not want to do or doesn't just handle anymore. The creator created and they're done. Now it's Nadia and Lucifer's game. In a way, Nadia is darkness while Lucifer is light. Basically, <laughs> Nadia is seen as an angel and Lucifer is seen as a demon. Sometimes they kind of switch roles though. <laughs> Without darkness, there can't be light. Without evil, there can't be good. So both are needed. Nadia 
had more of a hand in creating the species of my world than Lucifer did. Lucifer kind of dabbled more with the humans and that's kind of where things go kind of awry and that's the reason why elder species cannot really do anything against humans because they weren't created by the same creator. Now, Raven, Bo, and Lore are children of Fox Flame, better known as Foxy in the series that I'm writing, or will be writing, the epic series. They are the grandchildren of a wolf called Toluta. Now, Toluta was not a good person. He was not a good elder. He went away from the Elder Path and struck out on his own. He acted more like a tyrant than he did anything else. He really did not help the environment at all. He did not help his family at all. He was very, very, very abusive. And that is the reason why the wolves are in the care of Andeeb and Han and the rest of the vampire crew. Andeeb killed Taluta. So now Andeeb is technically alpha. And that gnaws at Raven daily. Every single minute. She absolutely hates the fact that there is another species that is an alpha to her pack. That is the reason why she has a drive to be in this school and do better and fight Andy for the alpha position. Wolf, or Summer's Wolf, is her aunt. And it is Summer's Wolf that you are introduced to in the series. She is the main character that ties the whole series together. And Dreamer is actually hinted at in a couple of the later episodes. I think episode 9 and 10. And Dreamer is Raven, Bo, and Lore's uncle. Bo actually looks more like Dreamer than he does Foxy. Or Wolf, for that matter. And Dreamer should be the alpha of the pack but he kind of got out of it and I'm not really going to go into that because that again goes into one of the books in the epic. It actually is mentioned and talked about in the first book so I'm not going to really talk about that much. But Dreamer is mentioned. Raven adores Dreamer and wants to be a lot like him because he is strong and able and a great actor. <laughs> and everybody absolutely loves him. Raven will mention Dreamer a few times and so will Bo throughout the series of Mists. Another thing that I kind of want to mention while I have your attention is the HB90 course. None of this would be possible for me to talk about it without the HB90 course. The HB90 course helps me plan, it helps me get all my ducks in a row, and it just helps me set goals. And Miss was one of my goals. I wanted it to be published this year and HB90 helped me realize how to do that. There is going to be a link down below to the next course so make sure to hit that and sign up for it. It's going to be a life changer. It's going to help you de-stress some and it's going to help you work towards your dreams and get your goals accomplished. There is also a link to the HB90 and Publish and Thrive course bundle. If you want to do that, I highly recommend it because it'll save you some money and therefore you can get planning and goal setting and all that down while also learning how to publish and thrive. Publish and Thrive course isn't open yet. It should start again somewhere around February or March. I'm not exactly sure when. But whenever you sign up for the bundle, you automatically get signed up for the next course that's going to occur. 
Hit those links. Get your life in order. De-stress a little bit. The more you read Miss, the more you will get into the world that I have built for my epic. And Miss is going to be a nice little introduction to the epic. It's going to be a taste tester, if you will. And I am going to enjoy introducing you to some of the species and things that are kind of native to Murphy. There are little stories and also the species that have been in my head for so long. Some of those have been hinted at so far and one of those is talked about actually. It's called a haint and if you live in the south or anywhere around the South, you pretty much know what a haint is. It's kind of one of those unspeakable things. And the fact that I'm speaking about it now kind of sets my little southern heart to beating against my rib cage, kind of like a bird, but it's fine. My grandmother taught me a long time ago what to do if a haint ever comes around if I speak of it and I'm pretty sure in my powers here. <laughs> but haints are interesting little creatures. Well, some of them can be big creatures. There is some folk folklore about haints in Cherokee and Creek Nation, but haints also came over with the slaves. The talked about haints and the rumors spread, the stories spread, the legends spread, but they are making a little bit of a comeback because I've noticed that there's been a lot more folklore being talked about. Uh, Appalachian Gods is a podcast that I highly recommend. I'll have the link down in the description below, but they speak of haints and there's a couple of stories about haints in there. And they are very, very interesting, along with some other things that are native to the South, native to the Appalachians. And yeah, I highly recommend that you listen to that because some of the creatures that are in Appalachian Gods are going to make an appearance in Mists. Haints in my world are a little different and I'm not going to go too too much into them because I don't really want to spoil it. But haints can kill. They are very dangerous. But they are quite quirky too. If there are newspapers plastered to the wall, a haint has to stop and kind of read the text. If there's rice spilled on the floor, haints stop and they have to count the rice grains or even pick them up. Same with corn kernels and sand. There's also stories about haints having to turn jars to where the labels are facing outward. So that might, might make an appearance in mists too, we'll see. But yeah, it's just little things like that. Haints are a scary being that have OCD tendencies. <laughs> That's all I've got for you today because this video is already terribly long and I do apologize for that, but I hope it was interesting at the same time. Make sure to check out the links down below to Appalachian Gods, to Mist, and to the HB90 course. The HB90 course is going to start on December 11th at 12 noon Eastern Time, so go ahead and sign up. It is well worth it. Be kind to one another out there. Be kind to yourself. Keep writing. Keep being creative. And I will see you next time.